recording this very very late on a Monday evening and um, going to be discussing the super flyweight card that was uh, broadcast over the weekend on HBO so um, yeah three big fights in the super flyweight division and you know we'll, we'll we won't break every fight down, but we'll kind of discuss where the fighters go, what logical paths there are for each fighter, and yeah, how they'll, uh, how what progression they can take, and you know what what's available to them now. Uh, some fighters have lost, and obviously some fighters have won. So um, <clears throat> I guess we'll talk about you know the, the I wouldn't say the um, the lowest fight, but I'd say probably the the fight that many people didn't really. Uh, pay as much attention to obviously with uh, due to name value and, and that sort of stuff even though with the co-main now you annoy uh, nicknamed the monster he um, you know he he beat Antonio Nieves I think it was his name his name is and he looked very dominant in doing so the fight almost ended in the second round if I'm correct and obviously um, Nieves was still there trying to battle but now you annoy was uh, uh, Inoue but uh, you know he he was he was a, a class above and he he looked a real real tough guy to be at super flyweight uh, i've been saying this for a long time i know um, you know the sort of lighter weight classes are kind of glossed over by many uh, many fans uh, apart from very very hardcore fans but uh, i did say this on the podcast i do think uh, inoue is probably the uh, number 1 at super flyweight i think his um, his skill set is very very um He's very, very, you know, good. It's very. Uh, he's got a, a lot of variation. He can adapt. He comes forward. He can box on the back foot. His footwork is absolutely excellent, and he looks a devastating puncher as well. So, yeah, Inoue is um, is a serious, serious operator at one uh, one fifteen, and I, I think he's, um, you know, I think he's the best of a lot to be honest. But he he looked very, very dominant and. Um, I'd like to see more of him in terms of uh, over here stateside or over here in the UK if, if possible. Um, I'm actually from the UK so I don't know why I said over here. But, um, yeah, I'd like to see him broadcast on a larger platform. I think his skill set definitely deserves it. And it was good he actually got the exposure that he deserved on, on, on this card. And um, yeah, I, I've got to say I'm, I'm very, very impressed and uh, I have been for a while on him do think he's the best and you know there are potential fights out there for him uh, obviously Quadras versus Estrada is a potential fight Rum Versailles is a potential fight um, Kaoya Fai is a potential fight you know uh, as uh, Inoue is probably not the biggest name he won't uh, be as expensive to bring over for you know American sort of uh, uh, broadcasters and whatnot, and also um you know, for UK people like Kalia Fai and Matrim, that he won't be, he definitely won't be as expensive, even though he has a belt and it would be for unification. So, um, yeah, I do think he beats everyone at 115 pounds and he looks very good in doing so, to be honest. Um, moving on, Quadras versus Juan Francisco Estrada. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I'd have to say this was probably the fight of the night. It was uh, it was all action. Uh, for me, Quadras uh, took the early rounds. Estrada, you know, was very very. Um, he had a very slow start, and for the second half of the fight, he really turned it up, and you know, he really um, he really pushed the pace, and he, he scored a knockdown. I think it was on Quadras. Uh, so yeah, he he definitely for me he's definitely acclimatized better to this weight class uh, against a very uh, you know. A very big super flyweight in terms of size, I think, just in terms of the, the frame. Uh, Quadras is tall, but um, I, I don't think his height actually, he doesn't use his height to his advantages. I think he, he's a brawler, he's a pressure fighter, and I think he, in terms of just uh, his frame, he's, he's very, very big and he's imposing that super flyweight. And I think uh, Gallo is his nickname. He, he definitely uh, adapted to the new weight class and he showed some uh, showed some good skills in there. You know, his jab was very, very potent at times, very, very sharp. And I thought he, he you know, he seems to have aged a lot better than uh, Roman Gonzalez. I know Roman Gonzalez is older, but, you know, he seems to have matured a lot. Juan Francisco Estrada, I did, I did pick Quadras to win this fight. 
but he, he, he impressed me in there. You know, I, I've been watching some of his fights and he looked a lot better than, uh, look, uh, sorry, he looked a lot better than, you know, he has done in previous fights and I thought he was, he was very, very good in there. It was a very close fight, you know, um, could go either way. Uh, maybe I had a slight lean to Estrada just due to the, uh, just due to the knockdown. But um, Quadras was definitely live in there. He says he wants the rematch. Uh, I would like to see it again. Uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be tough to pick a winner. They both uh, got solid styles that, that gel very well. And, yeah, I mean, if Estrada didn't really have that slow start, I thought he probably would have won a bit more comfortably than he did. But, uh, obviously, uh, Michael Buffer had a, had a bit of a mishap at the end and said Quadras won and obviously came back and said Estrada won. So, um, yeah, that happens, uh, I, I guess, you know, I wouldn't say the right man won because it could have gone either way, but uh, definitely another contender at 115 and a fresh face. And obviously he's the WBC mandatory now for, um, as we now know, uh, Saw Rungvisai. And um, that, that might be a good fight as well. That might, uh, the, the styles may gel very well as well. So let's see how that goes, if that's a potential option. And uh, on to the main event, Shrisaket saw Rungvasai. Uh, I probably got that first name wrong, but um, there we go. And uh, versus Roman Gonzalez, Chocolatito. Uh, for me, I picked Chocolatito to win this on points, but he looked like a shot fighter in there. Uh, he, I, you know, he, I've always said he doesn't really look like the biggest super flyweight out there. He done very well. To, to actually win a world title and a credible world title as well against Carlos Cuadras. Uh, that was a close fight. But, you know, I always thought he's a very, very small guy. I know he's always he's always talked about moving through the weights and potentially moving to bantamweight. So um, it, it was always a bit confusing that uh, Chocolatito would always say this sort of stuff. Uh, he, he's very, very small, I thought, for super flyweight. I thought he was perfect size for flyweight. But for Superfly, I thought he's, you know, a bit too small. He's done well to win a version of the world title there. Four weight world champion, I think. So, um, you know, credit where credit is due. I know people are slating him, saying he's not pound for pound, or uh, other people are actually saying he is, he was pound for pound, or he is pound for pound, and people are just hating him on his credentials. I'm not going to um, delve into that because I don't want to uh, have more abuse than I already get. But um, I, what I will say is, Gonzalez, I, I think his time at the top may be over, uh, especially, um, you know, age, weight. Uh, I think it'd be tough for him to go back down to flyweight, um, you know, and he, he's had a fair few wars. Uh, I think, you know, it's taken its toll on his body. And, you know, he's, he's done incredibly well. Uh, one of the, you know... It, you know, one of the best fighters in the the lighter weight classes. He's he's got a hot, you know, he's got a pretty decent resume. He's beaten some decent names, some pretty good names even. And you know, he's held multiple world titles in multiple weight classes, and he's kind of dominated the lighter weight classes. And you know, I guess his rise has only been well documented in the last sort of year to eighteen months. But he he's been doing it solidly for for a while now. So. Um, yeah, I guess he uh, he he's done very well to to get to where he's at now, and you have to give him credit where where it's due. You know, he he's he he's won multiple weight. As I said, he's won multiple world titles in in different weight classes, and he's you know he he's done what he's needed to do. I guess he's uh, paid his dues in the game, and for me, as I said, I think his time at the top is over, but. He's still a name, a credible name. You know, people will still, uh, you know, hardcores will still come out to watch Roman Gonzalez and they will support him and back him. Um, whether or not they want to see him against a sort of super flyweight or flyweight, you know, it, it all depends, I guess. It's, um, it is one of those sort of, you know, uh, if and maybe, I guess. I, I wouldn't like to see him again. I... I hope he's made some decent money in his last few fights. I know he's been fighting on HBO, so, uh, you know, the exposure might be more and he might have got more money. But um, I, I do sincerely hope he, he has made his money because he's been in some fun fights for, for fight fans. And, you know, as I said, he's he's done fantastically well to get to where he's at 
or to get to where he, he is now or where he was just before the wrong side fight the, the rematch he'd done fantastically well 46 and you know 46 and one or 46 and0 oh, some people felt he won the, the first wrong side fight you know he, he done incredibly well and people who I, I guess slate him and in, in YouTube comments and forums and whatnot uh, I don't think they fully appreciate how uh, you know how good he's been and you know maybe he was just coming towards the end of his career uh, fighting that I don't know at an unnatural weight class and uh, you know he fought with a lot of things against him I guess in in these fights but I'm um, not not to discredit Rungusai, Rungusai done very very well you know he he will always be a tough sort of opponent for anyone I think at super flyweight I do think Inui will probably walk through him I'll be honest um, you know Rungusai he's a decent puncher don't get me wrong but I think Inui will just be too smart um, you know, he'd be too efficient, and he, you know, he he would pose a uh, sorry, he would pose a different threat to Roman Gonzalez. Uh, you know, Inui looks like a superstar. Rungvasai is a very very solid fighter. Don't get me wrong. I think a good fight maybe would be him versus uh, Kao Yafai of of Birmingham in the UK. I think that would be a, a fairly solid fight. It'd be a bit of a uh, war there. Same with Inui fight, but you know. Uh, that remains to be seen if it's going to be made. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see that fight, but you know, not holding, uh, you know, not crossing my fingers for it. Let's put it that way. Uh, not much more to say on the card. You know, the 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 card was 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 it, uh, sorry, it was what was what it was. <laughs> uh, tongue twister, and um, yeah, it, it was it was a super flyweight card, uh, lower weight classes, and. It gave it, you know, gave some exposure to the little men of boxing and some of their talents. I think Estrada is obviously, you know, is obviously um, so, someone to look out for as a contender. Obviously, he's a mandatory challenger to Rongosai now. But Inui, I think, you know, he he has some serious serious skills, and I think more people will need to watch out for him and you know keep an eye on him as well. He might move to bantamweight, I guess, soon. Um, if he faces someone like Zolani Tete, that's a mouth-watering fight. You know, Inoue versus Tete would be a, an absolutely amazing fight, and one I'd definitely pay to see if if it was over here in the UK. So um, yeah, not not much more to add. A good, uh, solid, you, you know, low, low weight class card, and you know maybe they'll do more of this sort of stuff. But uh, sorry, HBO seem to be uh, interested in the sort of lighter weight classes, especially now that more contenders are coming up and, you know, it's looking a bit more prominent in, in those sort of weight classes, especially with uh, other fighters in and around the weight classes as well, you know, bantamweight, super band, well, not so much super madam, but um, featherweight, you know, a couple of pounds apart, but there, there are a lot of quality fighters in the lower weight classes that maybe don't get, get the appreciation and recognition they deserve, but, you know, this, uh, this card seems to have I guess pushed it in in the right direction and hopefully they continue to do so uh, not much more to add so I'll round it, uh, round it up there maybe discuss the Usyk Huck fight not too much to discuss there Usyk did what he needed to do so I'm, I doubt I'll probably talk about that fight David Benavidez I'd, I'd love to talk about that fight in a separate video and obviously it's fight week Canelo GGG so you know and, and there's a one or two fights on the undercard that I like to keep an eye on as well. So I'll discuss Benavidez and Canelo GGG in a separate video. Stay tuned for that. This one will go up late on the, the Monday evening. Hopefully it goes up on Monday evening or just before it turns Tuesday. So uh, just keep an eye out. I will post that on Twitter. My Twitter handle is my name, J-E-T-I-N 87. So just keep an eye out. Uh, all links in the description. And yeah, like, sub, share, all that good stuff, and take care. Peace.